So this is my it's early introduction to Evil World Domination Plan A. Um, it's called it's codenamed Steve, and um, to make it slightly more friendly, because you know people don't connect with Evil World Domination Plan, uh, you know straight away. So feel free to interrupt. This is this is a discussion. This is something that we all own. We're all part of. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to find a a structure, a model for open source marketing that that benefits everybody. I think I'm going to start by working through some manifesto stuff. Why do we need this? You know, what do we stand for? And I really want your guys' input on on that because um, I think what what we're going to see from the manifesto is actually when we shine a, a bright light on this stuff that it's not working. Right, marketing today is doing amazing things. The internet's done amazing things, but overall, you know, is it really working for everybody? And that does give us a bit of a kind of um, a, a wind to fill our sails with, it, in a sense. So you're obviously thinking, why is it called Codename Steve? Well, Steve Jobs said this. I just came across this quote today. The people who are crazy enough to think they can change the world are the ones who do. And I think that's good enough reason to uh, base our our plan on, call it Steve. Okay, so I'm going to work through some manifesto ideas. Just This is basically trying to start from the, the root causes, from the logic. Why are we even doing this in the first place? And I think if we can get clear on all of that and agree on that, then we've got a much better foundation to move forward. This is a key thing for me. When I sat down on Saturday, tried to work this out, took a piece of paper, sat in the garden. I, I got, this is the first thing I wrote down. It's too much information, too little intelligence. So what that means is, there's more information about marketing, right? The marketing being the, the discipline of finding and selling customers right it's not it's not rocket science right we're creating customers for businesses there's more information about marketing than than there's ever been before and we have passed the tipping point where there's more information than anyone can possibly consume right if you were to buy every book on marketing you couldn't read them all because there's there's new books not even brian can read them all right um there's courses on marketing coming out all the time the 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 marketing information marketing sector, the MIM sector, is expanding almost exponentially because there are people out there selling information on how to sell information about marketing to people, right? And you can see how it's going to work. Because you know, if they're selling their models and their methods, and their methods are around selling their models and their methods, then the people who learn from them are going to be selling the same kind of stuff. So there's more and more people selling courses on, on marketing as well as time management and personal development and all that kind of stuff. It's, it's getting to the point where the world is oversaturated, I think, with marketing information. At the same time, <clears throat> as we know, there are more tools and techniques than we can possibly keep up with. I mean, how it's probably on most of our calls that somebody mentions some new platform that no one else has even ever heard of. Right? It's impossible to keep up. Literally, the thing is expanding faster than any of us can possibly keep up with. So what's the, the net result of all of that is a sense of confusion, a sense of panic. It's the Glastonbury effect. You know, like I, I say this story of when I was in Glastonbury in 1992 at the, the, the festival, if I looked at the program, there was so much going on that there were 15 different things at any one time that I really wanted to, to go and do or be, be at or watch. And I, it actually left me unable to decide. So there's confusion. I think we can acknowledge or certainly explore the idea that that the, the world of online marketing is in a state of confusion. And I think we need to ask why. And this is the key. This is the key um, that, that we 
<clears throat> really identified in web design is dead. The problem that we have is, how do we, and this could be, we could be DIY or done for you, right? We could be clients doing it for our own business or professionals doing it for, for on behalf of clients. But how does anyone discern which tactics, methods or channels, so which techniques are right for a particular context? Think about it. You've got a, a campaign that you want to run, either for yourself or, or for another party. Do you use pay-per-click? Do you use SEO? Do you use content marketing? Do you use email? Do you use affiliates? Right, and then how do you do all the things that, that you need to do? Should you be using squeeze pages, landing pages, marketing automation, email follow-up sequences, YouTube videos, Wistia videos, Vimeo videos, right? Um, <clears throat> explainer videos. Should you be getting long-form sales copy written? Right, do you, how, how, should you be doing a product launch or a, you know, a, a release sequence or ethical bribes and lead magnets and all that kind of stuff? There are so many different tactics that you can take. And for each tactic, there's so many different tools and platforms that you can employ. The big question isn't, does any of this stuff work? Because it all works. It can all work. Right? And there's people out there shouting in the marketplace, Use this technique, it works. Use my new secret hack, it works. If you're not using this marketing secret, you're losing money. Right? So how are we supposed to cope with, with that kind of paranoia almost? One question we have to ask is, I mean, traditionally what you do is you rely on experts. So you, you go to the people who, whose job it is to observe and monitor an industry and to advise on it. And you can do that, right? There are, there are magazines about any kind of product or any kind of method in the world. You can, there are publications on it, right? So if you're into eye surgery, you can get ophthalmology magazines or journals with proper scientific stuff that have been reviewed by the, the, the people who, who really know what they're talking about, okay? Um, <clears throat> if you want to know about yachts or watches or farming there's all kinds of information out there but if if you want to know about internet marketing who the hell can you trust seriously and th this is only just occurring to me as i'm talking about it it's like you know it, it's like having the fox guarding the hen house so much of the time can you rely on experts now there are really two major incumbent um, sectors within this marketplace. In the done for you, at the done for you end of the market, we've got agencies. Now, agencies have been around for a hundred years. Uh, agencies have been around pretty much since marketing's been around. Um, then on the DIY end, you've got the marketing gurus, the marketing information marketers. Now. Question is, how much can we trust these people? Because I think that if if you're talking to agencies or, or specialists, or if you're talking to uh, the marketing gurus, either way you're in a bind. Because this is the the ivory tower problem, right? We're dependent on them. They claim to have knowledge and skills that we don't possess. Now, sometimes they, you know, that's absolutely true. So sometimes that can be absolutely true, and you know, very often, you know, some business owners, you know, maybe just shouldn't ever try to run their own AdWords campaign, write their own copy, write their own emails. Some just aren't aren't capable of doing it, right? <clears throat> but in other times, I think the that scarcity, the fact that they have this information, we don't have it, is not real as well. I'm saying that sometimes that the gap between us and them <clears throat> is artificially created or artificially preserved. And I had this experience, I, when I talk about it, and it was around year 2000. I was working at FreeServe. We hired a 
London Soho agency to advise us on branding. We spent probably at least, it had to be a five figure fee to this agency, maybe more, that's in pounds. We went down to London, we were smarter than them. We knew more about it than they knew. And, um, you know, that was quite an eye-opener for me. So this gap can sometimes is only perceived. And we don't need, we don't need information. We know this. We don't need information. There is so much information out there. Everybody's putting out free videos, free blogs, free eBooks and stuff. We can sign up for newsletters until if I signed up for every internet marketing newsletter, I wouldn't be able to read them all. There just aren't enough hours in the day. Right? We, so information is not the problem. Intelligence is the problem. Right? So this isn't intelligence. Use this new secret trick as a shortcut to easy money is not intelligence. Right? That's just saying, use this, use this. At the same time, <clears throat> if you were to talk to an agency or a specialist who says, you want AdWords, I'll do AdWords. Right? That's, not, that's not intelligence. The intelligence comes before. The intelligence says, which techniques, channels, methods should I be using? So this is the intelligent question. Right? Help me to choose the best techniques to plan a campaign and execute that campaign. That's what we need. That's what we need the intelligence for. So this is all starting to, to crystallize a bit in my mind, I think. So what's becoming clear to me is that the agency sector and the marketing information marketing sector, both of those depend on the perceived scarcity of intelligence. And that is requires clients of these people, right? And we've all been clients of these people in different ways. It depends on the clients being complicit in the perception of scarcity of intelligence as well. And I guess what I'm saying is, in some cases, there is no gap of intelligence. That, in fact, sometimes all it needs is for the client to be educated or empowered to be able to make that discernment um, decisions themselves. But the, the established sectors, the agencies and the marketing information marketers, they have a vested interest in the persistence of the scarcity. It's actually in their interest to preserve that scarcity doesn't matter how many information marketers you follow, how many courses you buy, how many books you read, there's always going to be another one coming out. Right? That course that you took last year will be replaced by something better, something updated. There'll be a new trick. Google will change its algorithm and suddenly the trick that I sold you two months ago doesn't work anymore and you have to buy my next trick because I've just worked this out. This new amazing source of traffic, these new amazing ways to boost your conversion rate by 136.2%. Now, if you don't believe that I've got information and insight and knowledge that you don't possess, you're not going to pay me that money. <clears throat> so why, why would I want to complete your education? Even if I could. Right, I'm not saying that's even possible. Uh, what, what I'm saying is that the people who rely on the scarcity of intelligence have a vested interest in preserving that divide. And I believe that this situation has resulted in lots and lots of people getting legally robbed and ripped off over and over again. I believe that there's a huge silent majority of customers of both the agency and the marketing information marketing sectors that has not been served. They have been failed. Sometimes, in fact, very often, unconsciously, right, and with the best intentions, but that isn't the point. They've still been failed. And that this, this majority, is the silent majority, does not talk about their experiences. They do not get together and share those experiences because we are 
we are only the individuals. Right? We're gathering around the, the guru. So we're gathering around the experts, the people who stand up at the conferences and say, look what we did on this campaign. Well, they must know it. So we stand in awe of those people and we are not unionized. The customers of the agencies are not unionized. The people who buy the marketing courses off the marketing information marketers do not have a place to come together and say, I tried this, it was bullshit, it didn't work. Right? It was or very often the reason is gonna be is because I'm not in the marketing information marketing business. I'm not in the trying to get as many people to buy my stuff. Um as possible by overinflating my message and uh, you know um, exaggerating and uh, and creating false scarcity and false urgency and all these tricks. You are, you, if you're not in the manipulation business, to sum it up, then these techniques are very often not going to work for you. But you'll end up blaming yourself because you've got nobody else to talk to about it. So there's actually no forum for people to come together and say. These people who claim to be SEO experts took our money and did nothing for our business. How many times have each of us heard that? Or, you know, AdWords consultants or branding consultants or, you know, they, they re redesigned my website and, you know, my sales disappeared. Even the sales I was getting went. Right? We've all, I'm sure we've all got horror stories about that. Or the people who go and buy the courses off the MIM guys. And the stuff doesn't work. You've got nobody, no forum to, to, to share those experiences. It just doesn't exist. I even think that many of us who have either sold marketing services or sold marketing information can probably admit to being part of that ripoff in some way. For example, what, a few, about six years ago, I took £55,000 off a client to build a, a clever online marketplace where consultants and, and thinkers could um, basically, it was like, kind of like an Odesk for, um, for thinking, right? for high level business information. Actually it worked. We built the thing, it worked. <clears throat> we fulfilled what we were asked to do. But it, the, it then entirely bombed because what we didn't say to the client was, just building this thing isn't going to be enough. Right? We, we were all sitting there with a build it and they will come approach. Right? We took nearly $100,000 off this guy, of his employer's money, and there was no marketing plan whatsoever. There was no budget put aside whatsoever. And because of that, the 55 k was thrown down the drain. This thing couldn't work. Now... I didn't know that at the time because I didn't have a way, a model of thinking about how, how things, you know, I'd never done a startup in that way. It was, it was a new territory for me. And, you know, the partners I was working with, no, none of us thought about it, right? But th that, that doesn't make it okay. It does not make it okay. Right, if I'd been if I'd continued to sell my pro web design course right now and told people, get this course, go out in the money and make money as a web designer, then I would not be in integrity to do that. And in fact I would be party to that ripoff culture. Because it's it's actually getting harder and harder to be an all round web designer. As uh we set out in, in Web Design is Dead. So what if it was different? What if we made the whole system of marketing all around the world transparent? What if we agreed to agree on best practice together? Right? What that means is that we gather together all these disparate people, all, the, all of us nomads who are wandering around in the marketing desert and say, right, come on guys, let's get together and let's figure out together what works. And what if we made that best practice available to everybody who needed it freely and regardless of ability to pay? 
right? So this is this is really the crux of what we're doing. We're saying we're going to publish the best practice. We'll figure out what it is. We're going to publish it so that anybody can see the marketing method. So it stops being hidden in the ivory tower. It becomes accessible to everybody. So every client can see, okay, well, this is my, I've had my one hour introduction to what a marketing process should, should look like. So now if I speak to a, a consultant or an agency or a freelancer who is speaking the same language, right? That we're all speaking the same language or using that same model. I can understand what they're talking about and they're not going to be able to bamboozle me and pull the wall over my eyes. That's the vision. So we've all also had this realization that marketing is a system because a system can compromise really two main things. It can comprise um, models, which are basically information structures. So that could be, um, you know, data formats for sharing information like HTTP, right? Um, or it could be uh, database structures, all kinds of things. And the other thing is methods. So we've got models and we've got methods. Methods are the logic and the processes. If this, then do that. In this situation, this is what we do. A, B, C, D, E. Okay. Um, now in software, we've got data structures and we've got procedures. Right. So in it's, this is exactly the same thing. Marketing is the same thing. It's saying, let's get the data that comes in. And in terms of marketing, that means, okay, what is a situation that we're in? What are we trying to achieve? Who are we talking to? Right? So lots of questions. We get the lay of the land. That's our input data. All right? Then we have logic to make some decisions. Then we decide what we're going to do, our strategy. Then we roll it out. Right? Tactical processes. So marketing is no less a system than software is. And because it's just like a system, it can be made open source because models and methods can be written down and they can be shared. So all it takes is an intention and that's what open source marketing is. At its core, open source marketing is a declared intention to standardize the practice of marketing and to do that together. So what I'd like to do now briefly is have a look at uh, Evil World Domination Plan A, codename Steve, um, and what that may look like for all the various, or most of the various stakeholders of open source marketing, because, hey, here's one of the things. We don't know everyone who, who is going to have an interest in this, in this thing, and that's one of the scary and wonderful things about doing something like this and releasing it open to the world. So <clears throat> I've got three three main components so far of open source marketing. Now the core one is the open source marketing code base. It's that the central website, it's open source marketing project.org. And this is really, this is the thing that I see as personally my baby. And in the way that the Linus Torvalds um, controls and or has controlled in the past very carefully the Linux code base, that is what I would propose to do for the open source marketing code base. And that comprises our, obviously our models like the, the circuit and the, um, the campaign structure that, that we're using and that we're working with. And of course, these things will evolve and be changed slightly over time. And they comprise our processes. And there's going to be a lot of information there. And that information necessarily must grow and evolve over time. So we've got those main phases, the strategy, campaign design, campaign delivery, and live operation. Campaign also has its own sub phases within it and objectives and all kinds of funky things. And we've also got techniques and tools. So some techniques and tools like marketing automation may, um, and the, you know, within that, when do we use Infusionsoft? When do we use Mautic? When do we use whatever, Mad Mimi? Um, yeah, you know, within that, there's there's uh, lots of specific tools 
or platforms or techniques that we that we may use. And this is a a never ending um, kind of pattern. However, the world doesn't need a comprehensive list of all the email marketing providers. Right? What the world needs is this is best practice. If you are this size business and this is what you're trying to do, this is best practice for you. If you're this size business and you're trying to do something like that, this is best practice for you. All right? And that's a that's a massive undertaking, but it's an undertaking that I think we should embrace. <clears throat> the second kind of entity with our satellite hubs around the core open source marketing knowledge base, right? Now, so if if the open source marketing site is the is the home, that's the shrine of open source marketing, the the hubs which could be at national level or regional or local level, these are similar to um, what how how do we call it? The this is the open source marketing in practice in the world. So this is resources, practical resources that you can go to. So they, they may even each have their own leader or business owner. They, they could be businesses in their own right. Um, and they, they will provide a range of things. They could provide done-for-you services for clients because people are going to need done-for-you services. And I don't think that Open Source Marketing Project is necessarily the place to go to find Open Source Marketing Professionals. It could be, but... Like I say, I think it's going to be enough for for me to focus on and to devote my life to open source marketing methods and uh, and models. So I think it's you know for other people who are better suited to running businesses, running agencies, this would make sense. Um, we've also got resources that it may be appropriate to provide at a say a national level. So we could have, you know, case studies for, you know, how a particular kind of sheep farm in Australia, that you know, did a particular thing. That maybe wouldn't be appropriate in Norway, for example, although it may be, or, or the Netherlands. Um, <clears throat> so for DIY people, so DIY people will will tend to start at the open source marketing project site. They may go through that, but also we could provide. You know, so here's a, you know, here's your your 10 minute introduction to open source marketing in Norwegian. Right? That's not going to be on the OSM site. That's going to be on the Norwegian hub, right? Or in Dutch, or in Spanish, or German, or Russian, or Chinese, or whatever. Um, there'll be resources for clients to use. So, for example, right here is your 10 minute introduction to your circuit interview with your um, with your open source marketing consultant. So we can have centralized resources. Watch this before our meeting, before our all day meeting on Monday, right? I want you to watch this introduction because that is the correct um, intro that you need in order to prepare yourself for this meeting. So, you know, we're following the, uh, the dry principle, right? Um, There'll be a community aspect to it. The community needs a way to self-organize, and I think that that would that is most appropriate done on a regional level, not centralized. Yes, we could have a a global conference in due course, but we can also have national, regional conferences as well. So DIY practitioners may want forums and places that they can go to share their ideas and get advice off each other. And also, professionals may need, um, you know, ways to organise their activities and to support each other just the same. There may also be courses, for example, that, prof for example, professionals might take. <coughs> but we'll go on to that in the, the third element. And that, another possibility could be um, to, to run something like the Breakthrough or some evolution of the Breakthrough. So... That's that's a done with you uh, offer offering, where 
professionals work with clients to develop their stuff, to develop their their marketing campaigns using the correct methods over time. And of course, if clients do that, and clients have been, they've had the education that they needed in order to work through the open source marketing process, and their whole campaign has been designed and developed within the open source marketing structure and process, then that will actually give their uh, their marketing a, a kind of portability because it would then be possible for them to take any documentation and share that with another agency or an open source marketing approved AdWords person or an open source marketing approved uh, Facebook marketing person or an open source marketing approved SEO person. Right, so it actually, what we're doing here is we're we're giving the the entire service industry and the client sector together a kind of common language, like an Esperanto of marketing. Right, so where everybody can can freely exchange information, so that you don't end up going to, you say, you know, pay per click person and and them wanting to throw away what the previous person has done. Because if you've got your strategy right, this is where the open source marketing professionals come in. When you've got your strategy, you've agreed it, you figured it out, it isn't the AdWords person's job to start tinkering with that strategy. But very often what we have today is that clients don't have a strategy. They're all working at the tactical level. They're all working at the you know trick for easy money level. And that's what's missing at the core of all of this is the strategy. So. <clears throat> That's when the uh, open source marketing professionals come in, right? So open source marketing pro certification. This is actually the equivalent to the um, marketing strategist role that we started looking at at the end of Web Design is Dead. So open source marketing pros are those marketing strategists. Now. There's various levels in which you can do this. If if you're interested in being uh, an OSM pro, then we we may, for example, offer self-study. We may do that for free, right? Based on the principle that if it's information, and if it's information for a DIY purpose, that one of our principles, I think, within open source marketing is that it should be free. And by making it free, yes, we know, has a, an impact on perceived value, but the bottom line is that when it's free and freely available, as in no price, right, so gratis and free, then it is, it can be accessed by the greatest possible number of people. And the more people who can use this and be involved in it, the stronger it is going to be. So people may then go on, obviously, to be, to be independent practitioners, which is absolutely great. That's what we want. That will be you know, a real sign of success of open source marketing, just as it's a sign of success of Joomla and Drupal and WordPress and Linux, that, that people learn this system, see opportunities for it, and then go and serve the market in a way that hey, we may not even be able to think of yet. And I don't see any reason why a Facebook paper click person should not be able to say, I work with the open source marketing system. That is different to, be, to, to being an open source marketing approved or um, certified professional. So we could have official certification as well, um, just, just in the way that Linux and uh, other systems will also. And upon completion of the official certification, then the new professional can join their local hub. Okay, so that's the the, the three kind of business entities uh, to a degree. A few other thoughts and notes on this: um, open source marketing core site will obviously have its own email list. We may even maintain an open source marketing book, which is almost like. You know, something that may come out once a month, once a quarter, where we encapsulate all of that best practice, potentially. I think some people like a book. Um, 
and then doing something like a maybe one a day, one per week day, doing an interview or a post about a specific technique or tool or platform. And that can be done um, with partners. Partners may be requested to or invited to make a donation to, to support the, the movement as as, um, as part of that. But at the very least, they'll, uh, they'll help talk through the two big questions that we have. When you know, and for whom and in what circumstances is this technique appropriate? And also then how to, you know, how can we, um, what should we be doing or not doing in order to get the best results? <clears throat> for the uh, satellite hubs, which could be their own businesses as well, they could have their own email lists, potentially a mon monthly membership, you know, but my idea is that this could actually be kind of a bottom up type of um, arrangement where where it's actually the community self organizes to create these hubs to a degree but they should be led by open source marketing approved and staffed by you know OSM approved professionals um, with the, all this the websites could actually be run off WordPress multi-site that the um, one of our members was uh, suggesting the other day which is a great idea so that for example the daily interviews that come out of the OSM core can automatically be published via all of these websites and we could have websites all around the world then we've got a possibility or a question of all each of these being separate businesses either um, run and owned and managed by their own leadership which could be an individual or or even a, a, a team um, or they could in a sense be franchise businesses but effectively, that's kind of the model that, that we're looking at. For the OSM pros, that is effectively, because I'm talking to my inner circle professional group now, that is effectively what this group will be. All right, so we will be the, the inaugural OSM professionals. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's basically the evolution. The certification business could be a completely separate business to the whole thing. You know, we, we need to think about playing to our strengths. And it's a different type of organization, different type of marketing, um, and different skills are needed to developing the open source marketing code base or for dealing with clients. So I'd like to put that out there that it, it may well be that, um, that there could be people in the community now who might be ideally suited to building and managing and growing the open source marketing professional certification side of the business too. So just quickly then how, let's look at how stakeholders can get involved. You've got practitioners and agencies. So this could be everyone from a you know freelance AdWords person or a copywriter up to an agency with 500 staff. Uh, so, but these are effectively the done for you providers. So they could go the self-study route. They can go and just get the information from the manual or whatever, or from the open source marketing project site or, and or other resources from their regional hubs, if appropriate, they may then go on to be independent practitioners or they may choose to go down the route of the open source marketing professional certification if that would be beneficial for them. But both options, either option is perfectly uh, legitimate. For businesses, i.e. Uh, clients, if they're in the DIY market, then they can come along to the course site or to a local hub and, and just access the self-study materials. And that's great. If somebody's at the DIY level, then we want them to be able to do this. We do not want them to be going out, buying a stack of marketing books, a stack of marketing courses, getting utterly confused by the whole thing, and still not having the intelligence that they need it. And I'm not meaning to say that they're dumb, but they don't have the, the information to help them to discern what to use, 
and you know what's going to be right for their particular circumstances. Um, they may also do a, a, some kind of done with you course, like the the breakthrough our initial breakthrough courses has shown, and that would be done again via the local hubs. If they want a done for you service or potentially done with you, they could also then contact and engage and hire open source marketing uh, certified professionals again via the local hubs. So the local hubs will be marketing businesses as well as information and community um, hubs too. The other potential stakeholder is possibly solution partners. And this is something we definitely need to be looking at. I think it's entirely appropriate for open source marketing to um, apply some constrictive thinking and to focus people's options. It is not our job to say, hey, there are 150 CMS systems on the market, take your pick. Here are the pros and cons of each. Because that doesn't, that's, not in, that's not giving people the intelligence that they need. The intelligence that they need is, you're a small business, go for this. This is, this is plan A. Right? Or maybe plan B, right? but with guidance, with appropriate guidance. So the solution partners will be engaged with and involved with supporting content generation on the core open source marketing project.org site. We may also then have strategic partnerships with key platforms or tools. For, for example, Modic, we, we, we're really looking into it at the moment. A lot of us are very excited about that being an open source marketing automation platform. Um, sorry, an open source marketing automation platform. Right? It just happens to share the name. But um, yeah, certainly very interesting. And I'm, I'm sure there, there, there will be evolving other platforms like that. WordPress, of course, and you know, Joomla are other um, open source publishing platforms and I think the more we look the more we're going to start to see um, well the open source marketing movement to evolve significantly and we're, I'm sure we'll find a lot more tools and platforms out there on the market as well um, there may also be where appropriate uh, affiliate revenues possible for example you know I'm, I'm already a Thrive affiliate and I'm a Thrive affiliate because I'm a huge fan of Thrive themes Right. If I was not a, a, a user, if I hadn't used it and proven their products in use and been able to say, you know, these are the specific results that I've achieved by moving over to this, I would not be promoting it. So I think, um, I don't think that open source marketing necessarily should exclude affiliate revenues. It would be one way of helping to, to fund the movement. Um, but it, obviously it has to be done uh, with complete uh, ethical integrity. In addition, we could partner with service providers, such as, you know, if, for example, if an, if, uh, if an agency or even if an individual wants to say, oh, we are open source marketing all the way, right? We're on board. Um, so we could have SEO or pay-per-click or copywriting or graphic design services. Um, you know, to say, well, we only deal with open source marketing clients, we could have um, strategic partnerships there, possibly also with revenue deals. Mm -hmm.